I'm Lena. My world used to be pretty decent, with my mom, Jane, being the cool optometrist in town and my dad, Richard, playing the hotshot plastic surgeon. Our house was always buzzing, either with mom's gentle guidance or dad's big tales of making people beautiful. Lena, pass those files, will ya? Mom would call out during her sessions at home. I loved being her sidekick, feeling kinda important in our little clinic world. Dad was another story. He'd breeze in, all charm and stories about his latest masterpiece surgeries. You know, beauty ain't just about what you see. Mom would hit back, trying to teach me something deeper. I didn't get all their jabs at each other, but I felt the chill in the air. Our dinners were a mix of medicine talk and dad's bragging, till he started coming home late, the air thick with unsaid stuff. Late work again? Mom would dig, her voice sharp. Someone's gotta do the real work around here, Jane. Dad snapped one evening, colder than ever. Mom's face would tighten, but she kept her words locked up. Then, the storm hit. Dad had been messing around with his much younger assistant. The day he decided to bail, he packed up like he was just heading off to another conference, not leaving his whole life behind. Richard, how can you just walk out on us? Mom tried to fight, her voice all shaky. It's not you, it's me. Look after your mom, Lena, he said, barely glancing my way. His advice felt like a slap. Wasn't he supposed to be the one looking after us? What followed was a nightmare. Mom dove headfirst into a depression so bad, it felt like she'd vanished. We had to ditch our home for a cramped apartment, all cause dad decided he wanted the house for himself and his new chick. Why is he doing this, mom? I couldn't wrap my head around the mess. People change, Lena. Or maybe they just show their true colors. We'll get through, she whispered, but it was like talking to a ghost. She was out of it, barely holding on. We were sinking fast, and then came my grandparents, throwing us a lifeline with all the love and backup we needed. Your mom's stronger than she knows, Lena. We'll help her back on her feet, Grandpa would say, him and Grandma, standing, like two pillars by our side. They never trash-talked Dad, but the lesson was clear, family's what you have when the world turns its back. Then came the final blow. Dad wanted the house, all for himself and his new family. Mom was too beaten down to fight, nearly letting him have it all. But then, my grandparents stepped in, guns blazing. They hired a lawyer who fought tooth and nail, managing to claw back half the house's value. That house got sold, and with that money, mom could afford a small apartment for us. Life took a nosedive after dad bolted. Mom, once vibrant and full of life, became a shell of herself. Our new digs? A cramped apartment that felt more like a box than a home. The shift from our comfortable life to this was like night to day, and not in a good way. Mom's clinic work dried up. She'd stare at the phone as if willing it to ring, but it sat silent, a mocking reminder of how far we'd fallen. The days she managed to drag herself to the clinic were victories, but they were few and far between. Lena, breakfast. She'd call out on her good days, her voice, lacking its usual warmth. I knew those days. It meant she was trying, for me. I'd shuffle into the kitchen, finding her staring out the window coffee untouched. You okay, mom? I'd ask, even though I knew the answer. I'm fine, honey. Just tired. She'd lie, plastering on a weak smile that didn't reach her eyes. School became my escape. It was there I could pretend everything was normal, that my family wasn't crumbling. But kids talk, and it wasn't long before whispers of my dad's affair and our fall from grace reached my ears. Hey, Lena, heard your dad left, cause he got tired of your mom. That true? Jack, a kid with too much mouth and too little sense, sneered one day. Shut it, Jack. You don't know anything. I'd snap back, fists clenched. I learned to fight with words, my tongue as sharp as any knife. At home, the silence was deafening. Mom and I, we were like two ghosts, passing each other in a fog of sadness. But then, Grandma and Grandpa stepped in. They were our rock, refusing to let us sink further. Jane, you can't let this beat you. 
You're stronger than this, Grandpa would say, his voice firm yet filled with concern. I know, Dad. It's just hard, Mom would respond, her voice a whisper, her spirit broken. Hard? Life's always hard. It's about getting up, dusting yourself off, and going again. Lena needs you. Grandma would chime in, no nonsense as ever. Their visits brought light into our dim world. They helped with bills, groceries, and most of all, they brought hope. Hope that things could get better, that we weren't alone. Lena, why don't you help me with this? Grandma would say, handing me a recipe. Cooking became our therapy, a way to bridge the gap the silence had created. I watched mom slowly, ever so slowly, start to come back to life. She began seeing patients again, her clinic's phone starting to ring with life. It was a slow climb, but we were making it, step by step. You think you can handle school and helping me at the clinic? Mom asked one day, her eyes holding a spark I hadn't seen in ages. Yeah, Mom, I can. Let's do this, I said, my voice more confident than I felt. But I was ready, ready to fight, ready to help us move forward. The struggles were real, but they made us stronger. The betrayal, the hurt, it was all part of our story, but it wasn't the end. It was just a chapter, one that taught us about resilience, about fighting back when life knocks you down. Then my grandparents died quietly one after the other, they left us a legacy, a bittersweet gift that propelled us into a new chapter. With it, mom found the strength to open her own ophthalmology clinic. It was a fresh start, a chance to rebuild from the ashes of our past. I'm thinking of naming it Visionary Futures, mom announced one evening, her eyes shining with a mix of excitement and nervousness. Sounds like a superhero base, not an eye clinic, I joked, trying to lighten the mood. Mom chuckled, shaking her head. Maybe so, but it's about looking ahead, Lena. We're moving forward, not looking back. I helped set up the clinic, painting walls, assembling furniture, and sorting through endless boxes of medical supplies. It was hard work, but there was a sense of hope and purpose in the air that had been missing for too long. Lena, can you help me with this? Mom called out from the reception area. I walked over to find her struggling with the computer system we'd installed. Let me try, I said, taking over the keyboard. You know, for a tech-savvy generation, I'm pretty useless at this stuff. You're doing better than me. I still miss paper records, Mom replied with a sigh. The clinic slowly started to take shape, becoming more than just a building, it became a symbol of our resilience. We were both learning and growing, finding our footing in this new reality. Opening day arrived faster than we anticipated. Mom was a bundle of nerves, double-checking everything and pacing the floor of the clinic. What if no one shows up? What if we fail? She whispered to me, her usual confidence wavering. We won't, I said firmly, more to reassure myself than her. You're the best I dock in town. People will come. And come they did. The clinic was busier than we ever imagined, with patients praising mom's expertise and the warm, welcoming environment we'd created. It felt like we were finally turning a page, leaving the shadow of dad's betrayal behind us. In the midst of all this, I started to find my own place in the clinic. I wasn't just the daughter of the owner, I was a part of the team, helping patients and learning more about ophthalmology than I ever thought possible. Lena, you have a real knack for this, Mom said one day, watching me interact with a particularly difficult patient. Have you ever thought about going into medicine yourself? I shrugged, unsure. The thought had crossed my mind, but it felt like a huge step. Maybe, I like helping people, and working here has been eye-opening, no pun intended. Mom laughed, pulling me into a hug. Whatever you decide, I'm proud of you. We've come a long way, haven't we? Yeah, we have, I agreed, looking around the busy clinic, we really have. As days turned into weeks, and weeks into months, the clinic thrived. We were no longer just surviving, we were living. It wasn't always easy, and the shadow of the past sometimes loomed over us, but we faced each challenge together, stronger and more united than ever. 
After high school, I had this crossroads moment, you know? Mom sat me down one evening, her clinic files spread out like a sea around us. Lena, she started, that serious tone in her voice that always made me listen up. Have you given any thought to becoming an optometrist? You've got the brains and the heart for it. Honestly, I had tossed the idea around in my mind, playing with it like a puzzle piece, trying to find where it fit in my future. Yeah, I've thought about it, Mom. It's just, big, you know? Following in your footsteps. She smiled, that warm, reassuring smile, that could light up our cramped living room. Big, yes, but not impossible. You've been my right hand here, since you could barely reach the counter. You've got this, Lena. So, I took the leap. I enrolled in medical college, diving headfirst into the world of medicine. Those years were a blur of textbooks, late-night study sessions, and more coffee than I care to admit. But I made it through, graduating with a sense of accomplishment that was both mine and a tribute to the path mom had paved for me. I interned at her clinic, getting hands-on with everything from patient consultations to managing the inventory of lenses and frames. It was during this time I continued my medical education, never letting the dream of expanding our clinic fade into the background. Then came the International Ophthalmology Exhibition in our city. It was a big deal, and mom had been buzzing about it for weeks. Lena, this could be a game-changer for us, she'd said, her eyes sparkling with that familiar mix of excitement and determination. And she was right, but not just about the clinic. At the exhibition, I met Alex. He was there representing a major pharmaceutical company, and from the moment I saw him, it felt like someone had punched the air out of me. He had this easy charm, a smile that felt like it was just for me, and eyes that listened. We got to talking, first about the boring stuff, supply contracts, new drugs on the market, the usual. But then, the conversation drifted. He asked about my work at the clinic, about what it was like growing up in a family so dedicated to healthcare. You really love it, huh? The clinic, I mean, he said, leaning in, genuinely interested. Yeah, I do. It's more than just a job, you know? It's part of who I am, I replied, surprised at how easy it was to open up to him. He nodded, that smile never leaving his face. I get that. It's the same for me. Passion drives us. Things moved fast after that. Alex started showing up at the clinic, under the pretense of official pharmaceutical business, but we both knew it was more. He'd bring coffee, we'd steal moments between patients to chat, and before I knew it, I was falling hard. One day, after the clinic had closed and we were alone, he turned to me, took my hands in his, and said, Lena, I've never been more sure of anything in my life. I love you. My heart raced, my stomach did somersaults, and all I could manage was a whispered, I love you, too. He smiled, that now familiar smile that promised so much more. Then, Lena, will you marry me? It was sudden, but then, the best things in life usually are. Yes, I said, no hesitation. Yes, I will. The excitement of the engagement consumed us. We dove into wedding planning, our days filled with talk of dates, venues, and dresses. Life at the clinic was usually a calm sea, the kind you'd want after a storm's past. That day, though, it felt like the storm decided to make a U-turn. I was sitting behind the reception desk, scrolling through wedding dresses on the clinic's computer, dreaming, planning. That's when the door banged open, like trouble decided to walk in on two legs, dressed in expensive clothes that screamed louder than their voices. The couple, a man and a woman, strolled in like they owned the place, eyeballing everything with a mix of disdain and superiority. The man, about 60, with an air that he breathed better air than the rest of us, was the first to break the silence. Hey, we need to see the doc, pronto. Got no appointment, but tell her it's urgent. He barked, his voice grating against my already fraying patience. I plastered on my professional smile, the one mom taught me for just such occasions. I'm sorry, but we're fully booked for the next two weeks. I can take your number and call you if there's a cancellation? His reaction was like I slapped him with the schedule. 
What? You can't squeeze in a real doctor? Do you even know who I am? Before I could muster a response that wouldn't get me fired, his gaze landed on my computer screen. The smirk that crawled up his face was enough to make my skin crawl. Looking at wedding dresses on the job? And look at you, thinking someone would marry that? I felt my cheeks burn, not from embarrassment, but pure, boiling anger. Excuse me, but my personal time is none of your business. Now, if you don't have an appointment, I must ask you to leave. His laughter was like sandpaper to my ears. This is how you treat people here. No wonder this place looks like a dump. And you, girl, ever thought of visiting a plastic surgeon? That nose and those lips could use some work. I was about to launch myself over the desk and show him exactly what this girl could do when mom came out. Her timing was always either perfect or disastrous, depending on how you looked at it. Her eyes widened in shock. Richard? The atmosphere turned electric. Richard, the illustrious father who'd taken a hike from our lives, looked like he'd just swallowed a bug. And who might you be? His voice was laced with feigned ignorance, but the venom was palpable. Mom's backbone turned to steel. The mother of the girl you've just insulted. She shot back, her tone slicing through the tension like a scalpel. His companion, a walking advertisement for plastic perfection, piped up. Let's go, honey. This place isn't worth our time. That's when Mom turned to me, her voice loud enough to cut through the standoff. Lena, this piece of work is your biological father. Be thankful he left. We're better off without his delightful company. The man, my so-called father, Richard, recoiled as if mom's words were physical blows. His arrogance deflated slightly, revealing a flicker of something else, was it guilt? Or just surprise at being confronted so directly? You can't talk to me like that, Jane. I've achieved things you wouldn't even dream of. He shot back, trying to recover his earlier bravado. Mom snorted. Achieved? destroying families? Abandoning your daughter? If those are achievements, then yes, you're quite successful. The room felt too small for the growing tension. I stood there, rooted to the spot, watching this surreal exchange between my parents. It was like watching a car crash in slow motion, you want to look away, but you just can't. Just when I thought the drama couldn't crank up any higher, dad brushed off mom's words like they were just pesky flies and doubled down. Look, just get the owner. My time's precious, and I'm not about to let your little clinic's reputation tank because you can't recognize importance when it's staring you in the face. Mom stood her ground, her voice calm but laced with steel. The owner? You're looking at her. And Lena here, she's not just my daughter. She's the co-owner and the future of this clinic. The look on Dad's and his new wife's faces? Priceless like someone had slapped them with the reality stick. Then Alex, my fiancé, sauntered in, quiet as a cat but with a presence that filled the room. Mom wasn't done, though. She launched into Dad like a missile. You left us for your assistant, stole our money, and made life a misery. But look at us now. We're standing strong, and frankly, I thank God we're rid of a nobody like you. Dad tried to puff himself up, all indignant like. Changed my mind about this place. Got my own clinic with top-notch specialists. Just needed a quick consult while on the road, that's all. That's when Alex, bless him, chimed in. Your clinic? Aren't you the same guy who botched that surgery on the Hollywood star? Got your license yanked and left drowning in lawsuits? You could practically see the steam coming off Dad. His face went from red to ghost white. That's, that's all lies. I'm well respected in my field. Alex didn't skip a beat. Respected? The only thing you're leading in is the race to the bottom. Bankrupt, tangled in legal troubles, and now this pathetic show? Not much of a legacy. Dad just soaked it all in, face, getting redder with every word, until he couldn't take it anymore. That's a load of bull. He exploded, his voice cracking under the pressure. I'm a legend in plastic surgery. My hands work magic. 
He gestured dramatically towards his wife, as if she was his masterpiece exhibit. Mom, Alex, and I couldn't help but take a good look at her, and, well, let's just say it wasn't a pretty sight. The work he'd done was, questionable at best. Seeing our reactions, Dad's wife lost it. She hurled insults at him like grenades, her voice sharp and cutting. Bad doctor. Bankrupt. You're a disgrace. And with that, she stormed out, leaving a silence that echoed off the clinic walls. Dad, now alone and looking smaller than I'd ever seen him, slunk off after her without another word. It was like watching the end of a sad, twisted play. After my dad and his wife made their less than graceful exit, the clinic felt lighter somehow, like we'd just aired out a room that had been closed off for too long. Mom and I shared a look, a mix of relief and disbelief. Alex stood by the reception, a silent but solid support system. Can you believe that just happened? I broke the silence, still reeling from the encounter. Mom let out a laugh, the tension in her shoulders easing. Believe it? I lived it. And honestly, Lena, I'm just glad it's over. Alex came over, putting an arm around me. You both handled that brilliantly. If that was me, I don't think I could have kept my cool. I smiled, leaning into him. We've had a bit of practice dealing with difficult patients, but he, he's on another level. Yeah, well, he's gone now. And from what I've seen, he won't be back anytime soon, Alex added, ever the optimist. Mom nodded, her gaze thoughtful. It's strange. For so long, the thought of facing him seemed like the ultimate showdown. Now that it's happened, it feels like. I don't know, like closing a book I've been reading for too long. That's because we're on to the next chapter, I said, feeling a surge of hope. And this time, we're writing it on our terms. As the day wound down, I found myself staring at the door Dad had walked out of. It was just a door, but it felt symbolic, like the barrier between our past and our future. Thinking about locking that door and throwing away the key? Alex joked, coming up beside me. Something like that, I admitted. But more about all the doors that are still open for us. Mom joined us, her arm linking with mine. He may have left a shadow here once, but we're the ones who choose what fills this place now. Love, care, and a whole lot of hard work. Yeah, and a no jerks allowed policy, I added, earning a chuckle from both of them. As we locked up the clinic that evening, the sunset painted the sky in hues of hope and promise. The departure of shadows wasn't just about dad leaving, it was about us stepping out from under the weight of his influence, ready to face the light of a new day. A few months down the line, the wedding bells were ringing. Me and Alex tied the knot in this cozy little ceremony. Just a bunch of our relatives and close friends, the kind of people who'd been there through thick and thin. Dad? He was nowhere in sight, which suited me just fine. The day was perfect without his shadow looming over us. Chatting with some of the docs we knew, the gossip mills were churning. Turns out dad had crashed and burned, big time. Debts up to his eyeballs, and his last bit of property, snatched away, to cover some of them. And the cherry on top? A lineup of angry patients with botched jobs ready to take him to court. Karma's a real kicker, ain't it? So, he's really tanked, huh? I said to mom over coffee one morning, trying not to sound too smug about it. Mom sighed, her eyes a mix of relief and something a bit softer, maybe pity. Seems like it, Lena, but let's not dwell on it. We've got our own lives to live. Yeah, you're right, I replied, feeling a twinge of. I don't know, something. Not exactly sadness, but close. It's just crazy, you know? After everything. Alex, ever the voice of reason, chimed in. Life's about moving forward, not looking back at the debris. We've got a lot to be thankful for. He was right, as usual. The wedding was a blast, a real celebration of new beginnings. And with dad's drama finally in the rear view, it felt like we could breathe again, really breathe. Our little family's got a bright future ahead, mom said, her hand finding mine. Let's focus on that. And that's exactly what we did. 
The clinic thrived, our marriage was full of love and laughter, and the shadow of dad's legacy faded into nothing more than a bad memory. We were building something new, something ours, and nothing could drag us down. Looking back, I wouldn't change a thing. The hardships, the battles, they made us who we are. And standing there, with my mom and Alex by my side, I knew we were unbreakable. The past was just that, the past. Our eyes were set on the horizon, eager for the dawn of our new day.